Hello my motor enthusiasts. In a display of sheer resilience, Lewis Hamilton ended a 56-race winless drought with a triumphant victory at the 2024 British Grand Prix. Starting second on the grid, Hamilton's sharp strategy and classic driving brilliance ensured his ninth win at Silverstone, making it an emotional home track victory. Meanwhile, his Mercedes teammate George Russell had to retire early due to a water leak, despite starting from pole position. Over at Red Bull, Max Verstappen managed a third-place finish but acknowledged pace struggles, while his teammate Sergio Perez ended a disappointing 17th. The race was not just about individual glory, it highlighted strategic depths, from tyre choices to pit stops, proving yet again the critical role of team decisions in Formula 1's nail-biting unpredictability. Hello everyone. You're tuned in with your host, Enzo. And I'm William, at your service. We're here every day on F1 Motor Fever Podcast, bringing you the freshest insights from the world of Formula 1. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to keep up with the latest. Let's put the pedal to the metal. Today's race at Silverstone was nothing short of a cinematic climax for Mercedes. Lewis Hamilton snapped a 56-race streak without a win, crossing the finish line first in what he described as the most emotional victory of his career. It's his ninth win at this historic circuit, a record that will be talked about for years to come. His teammate, George Russell, wasn't as fortunate though. A suspected water leak forced him into retirement despite showing strong potential early on. It's intriguing, isn't it? The sheer emotional release from Hamilton shows just how much pressure these drivers are under. And the weather! Switching back to slicks at the right moment really turned the tables. It's these split-second decisions that make or break a race. Toto Wolff described today's win as a fairy tale ending for Lewis Hamilton at the British Grand Prix, and honestly, it feels like a bit of a fairy tale for all of us watching too. It brings me back to the first time I covered a race at Silverstone. The energy, the crowds, it's electrifying. You really feel part of something historic. A fairy tale, eh? You're getting a bit sentimental, aren't you? Well, maybe I am a bit, but it's hard not to be moved by such moments. They're what makes sports deeply personal and memorable, don't you think? You're right. I apologize for scoffing. It's true that sports can evoke such strong emotions and connections. It's what makes them so universally cherished, after all. Shifting focus to Red Bull, it's been a mixed bag today at Silverstone. Max Verstappen managed to claw back to second place, thanks to some impeccable timing with tire changes. His ability to push on the hard tires in the latter stages was nothing short of masterful. It's these decisions that really highlight the strategic depth of Formula 1. Absolutely, and on the flip side, Sergio Perez had quite the opposite experience. Finishing 17th after a gamble on the intermediate tires didn't pay off. It's a stark reminder of how crucial every single decision is and how quickly fortunes can change in this sport. Yes, the contrast between teammates today really encapsulates the highs and lows of racing. Christian Horner praised the team's strategic calls, and rightly so, given how they navigated through that rollercoaster of a race. It's fascinating, isn't it? Just how quickly the dynamics can shift with the weather, tyre choices, and a bit of racing luck. It's what keeps the sport so unpredictable and thrilling. Every race is a story unfolding in real time, with so many variables at play. Wow. I can't help but think how amazing the world of Formula One is. Such emotions, such competitiveness, such adrenaline. It's quite something, isn't it? What do you reckon, my lovely audience? Are you enjoying the content? Don't forget to hit the like button, alright? I'm absolutely loving these updates, and I hope you are too. Thanks ever so much for tuning in. Let's carry on. Just a note, much of the dialogue today is based on insights from an article on Formula One's official site, reflecting on the race day at the 2024 British Grand Prix. The details are well laid out, providing a comprehensive view of the events. That's a solid source. It's crucial, especially in such a fast-paced and detail-oriented sport like Formula One, to rely on information from reputable sources. It helps maintain the integrity of the discussions and ensures our understanding is built on a factual foundation. Absolutely, and it's always refreshing to see thorough and insightful analysis. Keeping ourselves informed through credible platforms allows us to bring the most accurate and up-to-date information to our listeners. So, with that being said, let's delve deeper into the strategies used during the race. Reflecting on the recent race at Silverstone, it was a spectacle of strategy and speed. The synergy between the drivers and the pit wall was evident. Max Verstappen and Checo Perez communicated effectively, which is crucial, especially in those unpredictable weather conditions. It's impressive how the teams managed to stay on top of such dynamic situations. Indeed, the interaction between the pit wall and the drivers can make or break a race. 
McLaren also had a noteworthy weekend with Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri demonstrating some brilliant pace. However, their decision-making on pit stops didn't pan out as hoped, which Lando himself acknowledged was a missed opportunity. It's a tough pill to swallow, especially at a home race like the British Grand Prix. But it's part of the learning curve, isn't it? Each race provides valuable lessons, whether you're on the podium or not. It's all about how you come back stronger, and it sounds like McLaren are poised to do just that. Absolutely, coming back stronger is what Formula One is all about. The resilience and determination to improve are what keep the teams pushing through every challenge. Speaking of challenges, it seems the changing track conditions really tested the team's strategies this time around. Yes, the drying track added an extra layer of complexity. It's a delicate balance, deciding when to switch tires and how to manage the pace. But that's what makes Formula One so thrilling, the constant need to adapt and react in real time. Moving over to Ferrari's camp, it seems they too had their fair share of struggles and strategic gambles during the race. Carlos Sainz managed a solid fifth place, but Charles Leclerc had a bit of a roller coaster, especially with the early switch to intermediate tires which didn't play out as planned. Yes, the weather really threw a spanner in the works for many teams. Ferrari's decision for an early tyre change is a classic example of how critical and tricky it is to judge the weather in Formula 1. It's all about timing, and unfortunately for Leclerc, the conditions just didn't demand those tyres until it was somewhat too late. Timing and a bit of luck, it seems. Andrea Stella from McLaren mentioned a similar theme, reflecting on the race as having a bittersweet taste. They felt strong when the rain intensified but couldn't quite capitalise on those moments due to some of the calls made. That's the nature of the sport, isn't it? Decisions made in seconds that have huge repercussions. It's fascinating how a bit of rain can turn a race weekend on its head. Both McLaren and Ferrari are looking at what could have been, but they are also taking these experiences as crucial learning points. Absolutely, and it's this constant evolution and adaptation that keeps the teams on their toes and the fans on the edge of their seats. The silver lining, as Stella pointed out, is that they were in contention for podiums and that their pace over the triple header has been encouraging. Indeed, and with the teams regrouping and analysing their strategies, it sets us up for an intriguing next few races. The battle for better execution under mixed conditions will be crucial, especially as we head into more unpredictable weather at future races. Over at Ferrari, Fred Vasseur had his hands full this weekend. Carlos managed to claim the fastest lap, which is a testament to his driving in such challenging conditions. He mentioned that they went for an aggressive strategy with Charles, bringing him in for intermediates early, aiming for P6. Actually, it might have cost them P6 rather than aiming for it. Vassa noted that the decision didn't quite pay off as hoped and acknowledged that it probably cost them a better position. Ah, my apologies, I must have misremembered that detail. Thank you for catching that. It was indeed a gamble that didn't quite deliver as they would have hoped. On the flip side, Aston Martin had a better outcome this time, didn't they? Absolutely, both Aston Martin cars finishing in the points was quite the turnaround. Lance Stroll and Fernando Alonso managed a 7th and 8th place respectively. It's quite impressive, especially considering the past few races where they seemed to struggle. That's right. Stroll managed to handle the rain well, making the call for intermediates at just the right time. The team will be hopeful to carry this momentum forward into the next races. It's all about those small decisions and timings, especially in such unpredictable weather. It's what makes or breaks a race weekend. Meanwhile, Aston Martin had quite the weekend at Silverstone, with both Lance and Fernando finishing in the top eight, a crucial result at their home race. Mike Crack must be relieved, especially after they managed to optimize their strategy around the rain and tire choices. Just to clarify, why would they save two sets of medium tires? Isn't it better to use the fastest tire available? Oh, that's quite an elementary question for a seasoned commentator, isn't it? Typically, they save tires for strategic flexibility. Medium tyres offer a balance between speed and durability, crucial in variable conditions like we saw. True, it might sound straightforward, but remember, not everyone listening might be well versed in the INS and outs of Formula 1 tyre strategies. It's good to cover the basics for new fans who could be tuning into F1 Motor Fever podcast for the first time. Fair point, though we must be mindful not to oversimplify, lest our regular audience switches the channel out of sheer boredom. I reckon even the most seasoned listeners might appreciate a refresher now and then. After all, the devil is in the details, and understanding these basics can enhance the experience of watching a race. Haas certainly pulled through with a commendable performance this weekend. Nico Hülkenberg, grabbing sixth place, not only brought home eight valuable points but also highlighted the effectiveness of the latest car updates. It's these consistent performances that now see Haas edging closer to Red Bull in the standings.
That's a significant stride for Haas, isn't it? They are now only four points shy of Red Bull for sixth place in the constructors' table. I never thought about it from that angle, but it's an excellent point to ponder how strategic updates can dramatically alter a team's mid-season trajectory. Exactly, it demonstrates the ripple effect of technical enhancements and strategic decisions in Formula 1. The updates not only boost the car's performance but also the team's morale, showing in their results. Despite Kevin Magnussen's 12th place finish due to his early pit stop and the ensuing tyre issues, the team's outlook remains positive. And the focus on pit stop efficiency seems to be paying off as well. Bruno Famine mentioned significant strides forward in their pit stop execution, which is critical in such tightly contested midfield battles. Indeed, every second saved in the pit lane is a potential position gained on the track. It's these marginal gains that can make or break a race, especially in a season as competitive as this one. Haas seems to be on an upward trajectory, and it'll be intriguing to see how they perform in the upcoming races. Moving on to Red Bull, it seems they've had a bit of a subdued performance compared to Haas. Yuki Tsunoda managed to scrape a point, finishing 10th, which is quite the effort considering the tricky conditions. But Daniel Ricciardo struggled, only managing to come in 13th. He mentioned the team has fallen a bit behind in the upgrades battle. It's a tough break for a team used to being at the sharp end. It's interesting to see how much of an impact the updates are having this season, isn't it? Tsunoda's point does give them something to hold on to, especially with the unpredictable weather playing into their hands somewhat. Absolutely, and that's the beauty of Formula 1. You can never quite predict how the upgrades or weather will shift the dynamics during a race weekend. Ritsido's plight is a stark reminder that even small discrepancies in car development can have significant repercussions on performance. They are certainly looking to come back stronger in Hungary. And it's such a different track in Hungary, with a mix of high and low speed that could perhaps play to Red Bull's strengths, depending on their approach and any further tweaks they make during this break. Indeed, and every team now will be taking this brief respite to recalibrate and refine their strategies. It's these adjustments and preparations that often dictate the course of the second half of the season. Formula One is as much a battle of wits and strategy off the track as it is a test of speed and skill on it. Over at Williams, Alex Albon managed to secure ninth place despite some early setbacks, including contact and damage to his front wing. It's certainly a commendable result, especially considering the dynamic weather conditions that were at play. Yes, the rain seemed to offer him a second chance, and it sounds like they capitalized on it by making the right strategic calls at crucial times. It's impressive to see a team like Williams navigating these challenges so effectively. Indeed, and it's not just about dealing with the adversities during the race, but also about the continuous development war that's raging behind the scenes. Jody Eggington from Red Bull highlighted the ongoing efforts back at their factories in Fienza and Bista, striving for that next step in performance that could make all the difference. That's right. The mid-season mark is a critical point for teams to assess and strategize. With 12 more rounds to go, the championship is still wide open, and as we've seen, the pecking order can shift dramatically from one race to another. Absolutely, and that's what keeps the sport so exhilarating for the fans and so challenging for the teams. Every point earned is vital, every upgrade could be a game-changer, and every race is a new opportunity. At Williams, Logan Sargent had quite a noteworthy weekend. Despite a bit of a hiccup with the pit stops and some struggles with tyre degradation on the intermediate tyres, he managed to put the car in a much better position from where they struggled in free practice too. It's these small incremental improvements over a race weekend that really showcase a driver's adaptability. Didn't quite catch that, what did you mean? Could you elaborate? Certainly. When I mentioned incremental improvements, I was referring to how the team and the driver adapt the car from practice sessions right through to the race. Starting from a lower performance in free practice, making the necessary adjustments, and then seeing those changes translate into better race pace is a critical aspect of Formula One. That makes sense. It really underscores the dynamic nature of the sport, doesn't it? How about Albon? How did he fare during the race? Alex Albon, indeed, showed some remarkable skill, especially considering he picked up some damage in the first few corners. Despite this, he managed to avoid any major collisions and, along with Sargent, demonstrated good pace on the slick tyres when the track was drying. Both drivers moved up the order as the race went on, which was crucial for grabbing those points. And with the unpredictable weather playing its part, it really was all about timing and making the right call at the right moment. Absolutely, the decision on when to switch tyres, especially from slicks to intermediates or vice versa, can make or break a race. Williams seemed to have handled those decisions quite adept, which ultimately allowed them to capitalise on the conditions and finish with Albon in ninth and Sargent just outside the points. Over at Zauber, the sentiment isn't as upbeat, unfortunately. Despite being proactive with tyre changes and reading the conditions well, the team faced undeniable challenges with pace under both dry and wet conditions. While they finished better than they started, the underlying issue of lacking pace remains a significant hurdle. 
It sounds quite troubling for them, especially when the other teams are making noticeable advances. Exactly. And while the upcoming upgrades might offer a glimmer of hope, there's a legitimate concern that these might not be sufficient to catch up with the competition. The teams are evolving rapidly, and if Zauber can't match that pace of development, they might find themselves falling even further behind, which could be disastrous in the latter half of the season. That's a stark outlook. It really underscores the relentless nature of Formula One, where staying still equates to moving backwards. Indeed, and it's not just about the car's performance on the track, but also about managing resources effectively. With the European triple header now behind us, they've mentioned using this time to push for significant improvements. But one has to wonder, given the issues they've faced with tyre degradation and pace, whether these improvements will be enough to make a tangible difference. It's a tough spot to be in, but perhaps the break will give them the necessary time to regroup and address these weaknesses comprehensively. Their past performances at Budapest have been promising, after all. True, that track has suited them well previously. But as the pressure mounts and the stakes get higher, each race becomes not just a test of speed, but of endurance and strategy. It'll be interesting to see how they tackle these challenges in the upcoming races. Mario Isola from Pirelli highlighted the challenges and the strategic elements of the recent Grand Prix. It was indeed a showcase of resilience and adaptability, with nearly the entire range of tyres being tested under some of the season's toughest conditions. This race at Silverstone proved critical, not just for the drivers, but for the teams in managing their tyre strategies effectively. It's fascinating how the tyre choices played such a pivotal role, isn't it? Using the medium and hard compounds, like Verstappen and Sainz did, turned out quite competitive towards the end. Absolutely. The strategy to stretch the first stint on the mediums and then switch to the hards was spot on, especially under those tricky conditions. However, the cars that switched to the softs towards the end seemed to struggle as they pushed harder on a track that hadn't fully recovered from the weekend's downpours. That's a testament to how important it is to read the conditions and respond with the right strategy. Silverstone, with its fast corners and high degradation demands, really puts these compounds to the test. Indeed, and it's these strategic decisions that can make or break a race. It's not just about speed, but understanding how the car, the tires, and the track will interact over the course of a race weekend. With the season progressing, it'll be interesting to see how teams adapt their strategies based on these learnings. The tire management and strategic calls are definitely aspects to watch closely. That's right. As we approach the next races, keeping an eye on these strategic decisions will be crucial for any team aiming at the podium. For now, it seems the teams have a lot to ponder upon and possibly recalibrate as they prepare for the challenges ahead. William, could you have a butchers at some of the chatter on the internet? It seems there's a heated debate about Ferrari's management decisions. Right, listen to this. User Joseki 100 says, quote, Sources close to Ferrari have told BBC Sport that Chief Executive Officer Benedetto Vigna has balked at the level of salary Newey commands and that there is a concern he would have too much power and could override the system inside the company, unquote. Blimey, that's a bit of a sticky wicket, isn't it? Absolutely. And it sparked quite the conversation. Mystery Rub 5432 chimed in with, quote, Overriding the system would be the best thing that's happened to Ferrari since the 2000s, unquote. Then, user Bez Lightyear adds, quote, Ferrari, don't come round here giving us multiple world championship winning processes and procedures, unquote. Ha, huh, sounds like there's a bit of sarcasm there. Oh, it gets even sharper. Sergeant Pepper 87 follows up with, quote, Yes, we had our biggest success when there wasn't a single Italian in a top position, but damned we have faith in the Ferrari family, unquote. An own welder 2821 lays it out with a list of the non-Italian dream team from the Ferrari 2000s era, including the likes of Gene Todd, Ross Braun, and Michael Schumacher. That's quite revealing. It shows the international blend that brought them success, doesn't it? Exactly. And it's not just about the past glories. Users are pointing out the ongoing issues too. For instance, user Seg Core Dump mentions, quote, I'm sure HR is the main culprit at Ferrari. They think everyone would just be grateful to work for Ferrari, even at no pay. This is quite normal in Italy, where they have the lowest salaries in the EU, unquote. That's a tough pill for any company to swallow, especially in a competitive environment like Formula One. Right, and it paints a picture of a company struggling to balance its glorious heritage with the modern demands of Formula One, all under the watchful eyes of fans and critics alike. It's a challenging time for Ferrari, no doubt. This dialogue from the fans and insiders gives us a peek into the complexities of managing such a storied team. Let's see how they navigate these turbulent waters moving forward. Thanks for tuning in to F1 Motor Fever podcast today. We've tackled the intricacies of Ferrari's management strategies and the pivotal role of tyres in Formula One racing. 
it's been fantastic having you all with us. Remember, your support is essential. So, do subscribe, activate those notifications, and share our content far and wide, be it on your social platforms or during your casual chats. Absolutely, and don't just keep the good stuff to yourself. Let everyone know about F1 Motor Fever podcast and keep joining us for more thrilling F1 discussions. We're here every day, bringing you the latest and greatest from the world of Formula One. And hey, who knows what exciting topics are just around the bend. We truly appreciate you spending your time with us and we're eager to bring you more insightful episodes. So, keep your seatbelts fastened, because it's going to be an exhilarating ride. Pedal to the metal, keep your gaze on the road, our channel's content is pure gold. We look forward to seeing you next time on F1 Motor Fever Podcast.